Did you know that America loves large SUVs more than any other country in the world? But are they really worth paying more for? Today I'll show you why you shouldn't buy a large SUV. I'll show you the three most vulnerable areas of an SUV. We'll see what happens when an SUV crashes into a sedan versus what happens when it hits a stationary wall. This video may surprise you. We'll also see how SUV makers use sedan parts in an SUV. After all this, if you're still set on getting a full-size SUV, at least give some ear to the hidden costs involved, which I'll share. So hop in and let's get going. SUVs are incredibly popular, mainly because of the American perspective. We tend to view our cars as an extension of our lifestyle, freedom of choice, and love for comfort. Actually, it's quite ironic when you think how one of the earliest pioneers in the American car industry, Henry Ford, saw the vehicle not as a luxury machine, but as a practical means of transportation. Obviously, consumer mentality in America has shifted a long way since those early days. But first, let's briefly define what an SUV is. Generally, there is no globally accepted definition. In fact, it varies from country to country. In the United States, full-size SUVs have been technically classified as light trucks with off-road capability. This means that if you have an SUV, you have the ability to tow and carry. They also provide a high riding position and improved traction on slippery roads. There are several advantages why the full-size SUV has been popular. For starters, it offers a large space capacity for passengers and cargo. In general, the SUV is overall more safe compared to, for example, a sedan. It typically includes a lot of safety features since nowadays they're designed primarily for families. In addition, its size makes it more stable during frontal collisions with other cars, and it usually has more airbags for passenger protection. Now, as you can imagine, when you're on the road with a vehicle that's taller and heavier than the smaller and lower sedan driving right next to you, this can create a sense of superiority, but also a perception of greater safety. Safety. But did you know that safety perception can be deceptive? Let me explain. According to the laws of physics, whoever is larger and heavier will face less impact when a smaller moving object hits it. Just look at accident statistics. It's clear that drivers of SUVs and pickups fare better in collisions involving smaller sedans. Studies have shown that adding an extra weight of a thousand pounds, for example, can help make a car up to 20% safer. A typical SUV weighs around 4,000 to 4,500 pounds. And its frame is a huge advantage when it comes to off-roading, which the SUV was originally intended for. It's this frame that helps maintain the SUV's structural integrity in the event of a collision. When the two vehicles collide, most of the momentum gets transferred to the car with the smaller mass. That's why when a full-size SUV collides with an average sedan, the SUV tends to continue to move forward. The sedan, on the other hand, can receive about 65% of the impact energy or momentum and incur damages that are much more significant and visible. In such collisions, the passengers in an SUV typically suffer less impact, but the passengers in a smaller car usually don't fare as well. In fact, force is so strong that they can even suffer damages to their cervical vertebrates and other bones, as well as injuries to internal organs, even if the car itself doesn't sustain that much damage. Unfortunately, the driver of the sedan is about 8% more likely to die than the driver of the SUV. Even in cases involving sedans that have a higher safety rating than an SUV, the driver in a sedan still still has a 4.5% higher fatality rate. But here's the thing, a full-size SUV strength can also be its biggest folly. Many people are surprised to hear this, but when it comes to a collision with another similarly sized car or a heavier fixed obstacle, the SUV can actually suffer severe, even critical consequences. What happens when a full-size SUV hits a fixed obstacle? like a concrete barrier or the wall of a building. Or what happens with a crossover with similar mass, but a monocoque body hits it rather than a full-size frame in an SUV? Surprisingly, the passengers in the SUV will suffer more injury than those in a crossover. Actually, they'll suffer more than the SUV itself. The reason is because of the frame. The frame in an SUV is extremely rigid, so much so that it's unable to dampen the force of impact. Compare that to a typical crossover, which is frameless and has a load-bearing body. In fact, the crossover is designed with specially programmed deformation zones in such cases. In other words, when a crossover suffers impact from 
an SUV. The energy gets distributed over supporting structures of the body, which deforms it in a certain order. During this deformation, the force of energy dissipates, significantly reducing the impact energy by the time it reaches the passengers. So what's the result? Now the crossover may be wrecked beyond repair, but its passengers may come out of the collision suffering less injury than the car itself. The SUV, in comparison, will look much more intact since its frame maintained its own structure, but its passengers likely won't fare too well because the frame, which is stiff and rigid, didn't absorb or dissipate the force of impact, but instead transformed all this force onto its own passenger. So you see, the advantage of the SUV in a collision is really a when it involves lighter sedans, and even then, if it's at moderate speeds only. That's why it's a myth and blanket statement to think that an SUV is the safest car around. But now let's look at three important aspects of driving a car. Dynamics, braking, and maneuverability. What if I told you there isn't a single SUV that can perfectly fulfill these three aspects all at the same time? You see, the SUV was originally designed as a military off-road vehicle not to set records in drag racing. Today, we see them more often in urban areas and on the highway than on country roads or somewhere completely off-road. Statistically speaking, most SUV owners don't do real off-road. In other words, most don't use the SUV for the very thing it was originally intended for. But then again, who wants to drown in the mud or risk roughing up a brand new $70,000 Ford Expedition or a $90,000 Toyota Land Cruiser? But truth be told, despite its off-roading abilities, it doesn't mean that you can go wherever you want. There's another misconception. Not all SUVs perform well in off-roading. Many factors impact its capabilities. For example, its dimensions, weight, base length, track width, drive locks, clearance, and so forth. Many people expect full-size SUVs to have the same maneuverability, handling, and braking as a conventional car. But that's not the case. Just be aware that SUVs don't brake the way you'd expect. It's not like your average sedan. Everything has to be done in advance. After all, the larger and heavier the vehicle, the longer it takes to brake and bring to a complete stop. Take, for example, the Chevy Suburban. When it's traveling 60 miles an hour on dry pavement, it requires 145 feet to come to a complete stop. Compare that to the stopping distance of a small sedan like the Toyota Corolla, which needs just 134 feet. And if we're talking about wet pavement, it's even worse. So if you still intend on getting the large SUV, just keep in mind and be even more vigilant about not following other vehicles too closely. Braking affects the dynamics and the handlings of an SUV. We can make excuses for different levels of off-road capabilities, but the fact remains that SUVs are very heavy, so it's less able to maneuver quickly, especially if you're trying to avoid sudden collisions. And this leads us to rollovers. Large SUVs weigh more than regular cars, so they're three times more likely to roll over. The main reason is because they have a higher center of gravity. So if the driver makes a sudden maneuver, especially at high speeds, and not necessarily in a tight corner, there's a higher chance of it rolling over than a normal car that's riding much lower. That's why race cars are so low to the ground, so they don't flip over in a corner. Similarly, the same can happen in the impact of an accident. For example, the rear-wheel drive Cadillac Escalade and GMC Yukon have about a 23% chance of tipping over, making it the worst SUVs on the market. Another large SUV with a high rollover rate is the Chevrolet Tahoe. In both all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive models, the midsize SUV, Toyota 4Runner, achieved the worst rollover rate of almost 25%. In comparison, the Toyota Sequoia has less rollovers in general, and one of the safest in this area is the Ford Expedition. You probably heard of armored SUVs that the government agencies and corporations use, but look, they might be bulletproof, fully armed, and so forth, but they're not invincible, and they have safety vulnerabilities too. Let's talk about heavy weight of the SUV compared to a regular sedan. Logic says this affects the durability of its tires. Compared to passenger cars, tires on SUVs wear out much faster and will be much more expensive to replace. On average, the life expectancy of an SUV tire is around 30,000 miles, while an average tire in a sedan can get up to 50,000 miles before they need to be replaced. Heavy weight also affects how fuel is consumed. And fast, the most fuel-efficient SUV might get between 20 and 25 miles per gallon, whereas the most efficient sedans can get 30 to 40 miles a gallon. So it's significant, and there's a reason why they're called gas guzzlers. With rising gas prices these days, it's even more noticeable on your wallet. By the way, if you haven't seen my video on why gas prices are rising, check it out. Also consider the cost of maintaining and repairing an SUV. It's going to cost more to maintain and fix an SUV, as opposed to a conventional car. And don't forget, SUVs require higher insurance premiums. 
The average SUV owner pays 10 to 20% more for car insurance due to the increased risk of serious accidents. So if you're still bent on purchasing an SUV, it'd be wise to count all the costs, not just the sticker price, which of course is higher too. All of this is to say, this reminds me of JP Morgan's alleged words. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. But look, I'm not trying to encourage nor discourage you from buying an SUV, but hopefully this video helps you to objectively see all sides of the story and reevaluate whether you really need a large SUV. But now you tell me, do you have a large SUV? And do you love it or regret buying it? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.